Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Weird Wednesday from your friends at BalonyBrain.com. Another uh, one? I am, of course, the expecting grandpa, John House or used toy. Joining me is Daryl House or Suburban Hobo. How you doing, Daryl? I'm good. You know, I just had my grandson in my arms yesterday. Nice. Took him bowling. And, and his four-year-old, five-year-old sisters. He didn't really do very much. He's nine months old. Yeah. It was good, though. I like him. <laughs> hey, we got some stuff going on this week. And I, I did, this first story was just, you know what? I could actually pass on the story, but the kicker at the end just really, really captured me. This is about, this is up in, like, uh, New Hampshire. A man led police on a, on a, a chase through seven towns, and he was finally captured. He was wearing women's clothing, and he told a judge he didn't stop because he had to, had to get to his wife at the hospital. She was about to give birth. But <laughs> and, and women's clothing? <laughs> it gets better. Yeah, okay. according, to, according to police, Donald Smith, 23, of place style, I believe that's New Hampshire, he was driving more than 100 miles an hour, weaving in and out of traffic. He slammed into a stone wall Saturday night, but the Honda Court kept on going, speeding across the lawn of Trinity Church. The car struck air conditioning units, narrowly missed the church. Then Smith allegedly fled into the woods. He eluded cops for six hours. When they finally spotted him walking along the roadside, he was wearing women's clothing. Now, I'm going to tell you where it says on the, the, the source of the clothing for me is the whole story. I just, I just absolutely love this. So, um,. Chase began in Hampton Falls, continued through Exeter, Hampton, back to Hampton Falls, Seabrook, Kensington, East Kensington, and then Kingston. He was all, during the pursuit, items were being thrown out of the windows. Cops said they found a, a bag containing ammunition for a 380 and a 40 caliber handgun. <laughs> and, and then when it finally comes to court, it just it just keeps getting better. When it comes to court, the wife is in the front row of the courtroom. She's just sobbing, and the judge. Uh, he, 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 says, he asked the wife, says, says, geez, could you just hold it down? We're trying to hear the proceedings here. <laughs> so anyway, during the testimony at, at the uh, at the inquest, uh, uh, Smith dressed in an orange jumpsuit, did not explain in court why he found women's clothing, why he was found in women's clothing that were apparently too small, but he still had the tags because Smith had broken into, this is what I was talking about, he broke into ditties and doodads, putting on the stolen clothing to the to disguise it up. Diddies and doodads. Nice. I just love that name. I'm not, the rest of the story I could just toss out, but I love diddies and doodads. Well, so I've, 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 I've got some, uh, some, some food stories today. Taco Bell employee shoots enraged customer with a BB gun. Loved it. Uh, yeah, Springfield, Massachusetts. A, uh, a guy was apparently going through an open Taco Bell late, late at night. And uh, nobody would answer the uh, the window, so he, he finally got mad. He went around to the door, started banging on the door. At this is, this is 4 a.m. in the morning, and finally, uh, they they allowed. Uh, apparently, the uh, the Taco Bell employee went out to his car and got a BB gun after arguing with the customer, and started shooting the guy. Repeatedly, uh, yeah, police say that uh, they that they did. Uh, they also uh, the guy bit uh, Noska. That was the the guy's name in the arm. But uh, BB gun. The the guy is is locked up now. Um, it's not clear if Noska has a lawyer. Now that that's not considered deadly force, is it? A BB gun. No, but it is include it, it is assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. I go with that. Well, you know, people are crazy. I, have you heard about the latest thing that's going on in New York? No. You know what? When you have the the reputation as the greatest city on earth, you're supposed to do it first. Butt facials are New York's latest beauty treatment. Really? Butt facials. Really? Are you ready? I know. I I couldn't I couldn't go. Yeah, I was forced to. Read. Body conscious beach goers are spending a whopping five hundred dollars on a new treatment that promises to enhance their bums. The butt facial is the new beauty craze to come out of the Big Apple. The costly forty minute procedure uses lasers, chemical peels, and moisturizers to tone and smooth the boot. The procedure dubbed as the tip top tush treatment. 
Wow. That's good. That's no ditties and duties, but the tip-top tush treatment works for me. It's available at Dr. Matthew Shulman's. I'm, I'm shilling for him here. Matthew Shulman's Plastic Surgery Office in New York City. Go, see, I thought a butt facial was something different. Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah, but I, I would not want that either. <laughs> well, the uh, I've got a, a man stabs a watermelon and gets arrested. Uh, this comes to us from Connecticut, a 49-year-old Connecticut man. Is facing charges. I don't know. This seems a little. Uh, this seems a little over the top to me. But he's facing charges after threatening a woman because she found a watermelon that he stabbed in a passive-aggressive manner. Uh, the he was arraigned Monday on charges of threatening and disorderly conduct. He was released after posting a five hundred dollar bond. Now here's the thing. The woman had gone to police on July 4th to report finding drugs in uh, this guy's toolbox. He was not arrested. Uh, he, she returned home to find the watermelon on the counter with a butcher knife in it. She reported that uh, this guy entered, her, entered the room and began carving the watermelon in a passive, aggressive, and menacing manner. I, 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 I don't know. I, I can't see really... Some reasonable charges. doubt. Yeah, reasonable doubt. Is... I think is going to prevail in this. I uh, you know, wonder what she did to deserve that. Yeah. I mean, I, but I can imagine you know slicing up a watermelon. So it's you know going to make you pay now. Yeah, there's crazy people in this world. I'm telling you. And there's crazy cops in this world. I mean, it, you, you don't know where to turn anywhere. How about this? Here's the, I read. I saw this sort of the dumbest thing ever said to a cop during a DUI stop. I don't know if you saw this or not, but this I did not. Yet. Uh, made me giggle. He was pulled over with glassy eyes, slurred speech, a boozy smell, and he blew well over the legal limit on the blood alcohol test. So 61-year-old Michael Moore, hmm, interesting name, Michael Moore probably couldn't say much to help his case, but this, he told me that his wife told him that he had been drinking too much, so he decided to go out and drive it off. <laughs> nice. Yeah, he's just going to drive off the drunk. So he, uh, the, the arresting officer put that. This is up in Stewart, Florida. I guess you probably had to guess it was Florida. Um, also, Moore, which is really not the filmmaker, Michael Moore. I think this is my friend Michael E. <laughs> no, was Moore, so. uh, he was pulled over for speeding just after midnight. He mentioned that he was headed to a bar for a few more drinks after the spat with his wife. Uh, despite his reasonable explanations, Moore got busted on DUI charges. Uh, I'm guessing so. Yes. All right, well, I, I've been on food all day, so why stop now? Uh, right. Colin Zabrowski and Daniel Lubick both were arrested last Tuesday after police saw them together inside a stall doing heroin at Chuck E. Cheese. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese, the family-friendly pizzeria and playroom or whatever, both males were observed in the process of smoking heroin in Los Angeles. The uh, I guess the police were called. They actually had time to go in there and see the guys um, smoking heroin. Uh, I, I, and since it's L.A., I'm guessing there was no smoking in Chuck E. Cheese, let alone smoking heroin. Uh, Zabrowski and L Lubick were uh, under the influence and... Uh, Let's see, they confiscated drug paraphernalia and a small amount of heroin. And then uh, transported to uh, jail in Santa Ana, booked for felony possession of a controlled substance. And uh, But neither one of them had kids there. They just decided, to, let's do this drug deal at Chuck E. Cheese. Who, who would that, ever? Do you think that's think a of. premium topping, heroin? <laughs> Well, you know what? It's like you know, I'm a '60s guy. You know, not for nothing. I'm, I've been around a little bit. I never heard of smoking heroin. I thought you snorted it or you, or you shot it up. I never heard of smoking. I guess I'm stupid. Well, I actually learned about it in the uh, the Ted Binion uh, trial. Um, they call it chasing the dragon. And they smoke it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How about a little educational side of baloney brain here today? Are you all, I'm, I think I'm all done. I am too. Hey, well, this is, it's been a particularly weird Wednesday for Weird Wednesday. <laughs> so it's just kind of drifting off here. You're not going to thunderstorm coming in. Oh, we're closing up. I forgot. Here we go. Listen, folks, thanks for joining us on Weird Wednesday. BaloneyBay.com. We love you all. We'll see you next week. See you, John. We'll see you. Bye-bye.